Wanted to do a video today talking about what to look for when you're looking for a good quality shear. Things we're going to use the word shears and to describe different aspects of what you were looking for when you're buying quality shears. First question is, Bonnie, what's the difference between scissors and shears? Well, I've got two of them here. Which is which? Uh, I would guess this is a shear and this is a scissor. Well, by the dictionary, a shear is anything that's over six inches that you put more than one finger in. So by the dictionary, this would be a shear. Okay. However, the dictionary is wrong. This is a shear. If you're in the beauty industry and you have a good quality tool, um, though you need to call them shears. Okay. Unless you go to England, you go to Australia, you go to New Zealand, you go to some of the British Commonwealth countries, and in those countries, shears are for sheep, hedges, and goats. So over there, you need to call them scissors. Other than being family owned and, uh, and that type of thing, but what makes our shear company different is that we're a boutique shear company. We design our shears not only just for the stylists, but also for the sharpeners. And that's why you'll hear us talking so much about the sharpening of the shears and maintaining the shears. So what you're saying is we actually have four quality control set, uh, levels. We've got the, <laughs> the factory level. Yes. Then we have the level when they come to us. Yes. Then we have the level where the sharpener looks at them. Yep. And yep. then the final, of course, would be the inspection of the stylus themselves. Yes, 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 yes. And believe me, um, our sharpeners that buy our shears and sell them to you, they have, um, they are very, very picky. Now, let's get into why do you need a good pair of shears? Why, I mean, why should you invest in quality shears? Well, number one, you can damage your client's hair if you don't have a good cutting tool. Um, these are some pictures of hair that's been cut with dull, poor quality scissors. Your clients may have frizzy hair, split ends, because not the products they're using, but because of the tools you're cutting their hair with. That's, that's, that's pretty sad. If you're the one that's causing the damage to the hair, you're the one that's causing the split ends. And maybe their hair doesn't grow because of the split ends and it keeps breaking off and they're wanting length and you're the one that's keeping them from getting long hair. So you want to have number one reason you want quality shears. It's, not, it's, it's because it's an investment in your clients to keep them happy and to give them healthy hair. Now you want to buy your shears based on your skill level, the type of cutting you're doing, and the amount of cutting you're doing, and also your cutting personality. Now your skill level, you're professionals now, so you want to buy quality tools. You don't want to buy your tools, whether it's clippers, dryers, or whatever, where the kitchen stylist is buying their tools. You don't want to get them from Walmart? Walmart, yeah. <laughs> Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Um, also, you want to buy the shears of the type of cutting that you're doing. Um, if you are a cook, you're not going to do all your cooking with a spatula, are you? Same way with your cutting tools. You're going to need to have a variety of tools for the different type of cutting you're doing. Now today we're going to talk about that main shear that you yeah. do most of your cutting with. Um, but you're going to want to add to your collection. So you want to have an idea of what type of cutting. Are you going to be slide cutting, slithering, straight cutting, um, scissor over comb? What type of technique are you wanting that shear to specifically do for you and buy something for that. And also the amount of cutting. If you are doing a lot of cutting, you want to buy, um, have, invest in better shears. Um, we get the question all the time about hair extensions. What do, you, what do you suggest, Jane? Well, hair extensions, you know, they pay a lot of money for hair extensions. And they take, in the stylist but it takes a lot of time putting it in. And then a lot of times they were told in school to use their cheap scissors to cut hair extensions. Yeah, I've heard that. And <laughs> on stage. Yeah, on stage, in fact, <laughs> yeah, at a hair show. And then what happens is they take those cheap scissors, they cut the hair, the hair has no movement, it, it just moves in, in block and you know, stuff like that, and it looks like a $5 haircut. They just paid you know, anywhere from 200 to $2,000 for that head of hair, and they got a $10 haircut. Yeah. So you need good quality tools so you can put texture and, and uh, movement into the hair. Also, um, you know, is it true you'll have to get your shears sharp, sharpened more often if you're cutting uh, extensions? Yes. If you get them sharpened twice a year, you may have to get them sharpened three times a year. If you get them sharpened once a year, maybe two times a year. Uh, that's 25 bucks. You're charging 500, 600, a thousand dollars for hair. You can afford twenty-five dollars yeah. haircut. And <laughs> you all should be able to. Now you'd be surprised at how many people go one place to get the hair installed, 
and go to another place to get it cut right, simply because the people that are installing it don't cut the hair right. And you want to get all that money. You don't want to get half of it. You want to get it all. You mean those fifty-dollar weaves are going somewhere else? Yeah, they're going somewhere else <laughs> to get them cut. That's for sure. So, uh, cutting personality. Now, I'm not a hairstylist. I'm a sharpener, and I train sharpeners. And but I love to watch people cut hair. I'm just amazed at the um, the talent, the artistry. And I've noticed in watching people cut hair that they fall into one of um, well, sometimes a mixture of these personalities. And I call them the eagle, the lion, and the gorilla. And uh, each one of them have their benefits and their negative things. So they can each learn from each other. So let me tell you about them. And you, t you, you notice whether you fall in which category you fall in. If you're in school, if you're in cosmetology school right now, or if you're a cosmetology teacher, you are probably an eagle. Most of the cosmetology instructors we've come across are eagles. I call them eagles because they look like an eagle. They usually hold their shears very upright. They have their elbows out here and they're able to cut in slides of the hair. And they're very graceful. They do nice clean partings. They um, can do very perfect haircuts. It'll be the same one time and time again. Um, a lot of your celebrity stylists are eagles because they can give that client the same haircut or if they're um, on set, if they have to have a certain hairstyle on in scene one and then two weeks later have to look exactly mm -hmm. the same, they can do that. Their stations are immaculate, neat, clean, everything's organized. They don't own a lot of shears, but when they buy shears, and you can attest to this, yeah, they are very, very picky. They get exactly what they want, and they'll spend the money for them. They'll have good shears, and they'll, they love them, and they name them, and uh, they take good care of them. And I can tell when someone comes to me to sharpen, they're, if they're an eagle, their shears are usually oiled and clean, and they'll be doing some of the things we'll talk about later today. But that's the eagles, very particular. But they're very slow. They tend to sometimes burn out in the business. They get because they do so much repetitive same haircuts. Now I'm going to go to the other extreme. And if you go to the hair shows and you look up on stage and you see the guy cutting hair and the hair is flying all over the place, those are usually gorilla stylists. They cut with very fast, very passionate hair is flying. They never can really do two haircuts alike. They'll always be um, something that's influenced them. Maybe the movie they watched last night, I hope it's not Walking Dead. <laughs> um, but they will design something for that day. They're very artistic. A lot of the new trends in hair come from the gorillas. They are interesting to watch on stage. Hair is flying all over the place. They don't worry about how they pick up their shears. How they'll hold them any which way. Um, they don't worry about body positioning, how they hold their bodies. Uh, their station's usually a jumbled up mess. There's hair all over the flo floor. Um, they buy a lot of shears, but only because they're always getting stolen or lost. Because they don't keep up with them. They don't keep up with them. They don't keep up with them. They don't take care of their little babies. And then in between are the lions. And the lions are the ones that go to the hair shows and they come home broke because they buy every gizmo and every gadget out there. They watch what the gorilla does and they take it and make it their own. They watch what the eagle does. They'll put it together and make something repeatable that they can do. They're very brave. They'll pick up a new tool. They'll try it out on the first client that comes in. Um, they love to go to classes. They, they, they love to learn. Their stations is kind of an organized mess. Um, and, but you want to keep your, if you own a salon or you're in a school, you want to keep your lion between your eagle and your gorilla because they keep peace in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Because when, when the gorilla can't find the water bottle, they'll go borrow from the eagle and feathers are flying. I've seen classes where you had a gorilla and an eagle both teaching the class. <laughs> that was hilarious. And, and the gorilla would be over there he, half, half, halfway through. He's still with the haircut. He's explained everything. He sits down in the chair and sits like this and watches the eagle cut and makes <laughs> jokes about how the eagle's cutting. But it's, it's fun and entertaining to watch. And they're both that. beautiful oh, haircuts. The they were yeah, both beautiful Both haircuts. gorgeous haircuts. Yeah. It's just two different ways of looking at it. So we're going to go through the letters in the word shears. And the S in the word, the first letter in the word shears is S. And that stands for steel. Now the steel is important. That's going to determine how long your shears are going to last you. It's not the most important thing about the shears. But the steel is, if it's not good steel, it's not going to hold an edge. You can't keep them that sharp. And that's what gives the longevity over the years. 
Now, there's two elements that make up steel, and they always, always, always make up steel, and that's iron and carbon. They're, that's just what steel is. You may have studied that in school. Now, to the iron and carbon are added things like alloys. Do you all remember that? I used to teach this, high school science. Well, you know, uh, I know we, went, we were in New York one time and picked up a folder and, uh, from a scissor company and a shear company, and it says, our shears won't rust because our steel has no iron in it. And of course, we know that can't be steel because iron and carbon make up steel. And also, so every once in a while, you'll hear salesmen say these shears are 100% cobalt, or yeah. you know, 50% <laughs> cobalt. And what they what they really mean is they're 1% cobalt or one half of 1% cobalt. So you, you just have to watch it and understand what people are saying about the shears sometimes. And and they may not be yeah, lying. They may, they, lying. They may just be ill informed. Yeah, ill informed you know. and, and not understand exactly what they're talking about. But if they do mislead you in something like that, they might be misleading you in other things too, so you just yeah. need to be aware of that. Now, alloys are added to the steel, and those are added in small amounts to give certain properties of it. Is this all that boring stuff that you hated in school? <laughs> but we're going to talk about it, and I'm trying to make it interesting to you. Um, chromium. Chromium is that shiny metal, and it's usually added in about a maybe 11% to, to the steel to make it stainless steel. That's what stainless steel is. It's steel that has chromium added to it. Now, other alloys that you're going to see added to steel are the, some of the heavy metals, like molybdenum, vanadium, cobalt. All of those are going to give properties and make your shears and your metal stronger. And um, you'll see those added into shears that typically would have a sharper, thinner edge for slide cutting or slithering. Um, sometimes these will have designer names like ATS-314 or VG-10. Um, there may be some other type steels that will come out in the future. These are brand names of types of steel that tells you that this is a better steel. Different steels is better for different purposes. Now all of the steel is tempered. That means they bring it at very high temperatures, bring it at very low temperatures, and that's what hardens the steel. Now you might see some scissors that will say, Ice tempered. I, we laugh and we say that ice means what? I, I cut everything but hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, all of them are going to be tempered. Uh, that's just part of it. And usually some of the really, really cheap scissors will say ice tempered. That's not a brand name, by the way. Rockwell hardness is how hard the steel is. When you're talking about Rockwell hardness, you want your shears to be between 58 and 62. Which, uh, and when they measure Rockwell, they'll give a one degree variance either way. So if it says 58, it can be 57 to 59, 60 can be 59 to 61. But you want it between 58 and 62 because if it's too soft, it won't hold an edge. Mm -hmm. And the, if you can sharpen it and the edge will roll over, it won't stay sharp very long. And if it's too hard, they become very brittle and you could drop them on the floor and they could break. They want it to be at least 440C or better. Okay, yeah. Uh, 420C, which is a lot of uh, your Pakistani shears and stuff are made of that. Uh, it just it's softer metal. It's around 54, 50, anywhere well, from 52 to 54. Steel. That's surgical steel. That's surgical steel. Yeah, that's what surgical surgeons use. Is a lower quality And uh, steel. you'd be surprised at how cheap the shears are. The surgeons yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a shear called the Shoto, which is Tashishan steel, and it's a Japanese layered steel, which we think is the best shear out there. As long as you got a, a nice uh, 440C Japanese stainless steel shear, you're in good shape. Now this is a picture of a Rockwell hardness tester and what they actually do, they'll take a diamond and they push it into the, the steel of the shears and see what degrees it takes for that diamond to penetrate the steel. And that's how it's actually tested. And that's something you want to ask your salesman is uh, what's a Rockwell hardness of these shears? And they, they should know. If they don't, um, then just go to another company. Occasionally, sometimes uh, you'll ha open up a shear and you'll look on the inside and you'll actually see an indentation on the shear. And that was the shear that, out of that batch they tested for the Rockwell hardness. Nothing wrong with the shear. It's fine. It's just that you may or may not want that indentation. But that definitely tells you that that particular shear is the Rockwell hardness they say because that's the one out of that batch they tested. Now, two other things you need to know about shears is if they're forged or if they're cast. Uh, Ford shears, I like to compare that to like a race car. Um, the Ford shears, uh, the molecules are close, they actually take the metal and press it into a mold. And the, the molecules are a little closer together, it's going to be a little bit more of a um, buttery cut. When you close them, they feel a little bit more buttery. It, they can get the sharper edge because the molecules are closer together. And this is the best for wet cutting and also for slide cutting. Cast steel, 
um, is I call it like an SUV. So if you are a heavy duty cutter, you're a gorilla cutter, you're going to be cutting big chunks of hair, um, that steel is poured into a mold and then it's hardened. And it's going to have a stiffer feel to it. So it doesn't flex as much, and we find it works really well for dry cutting um, hair. Yeah, and if there's a, a salon where they're not doing all the shampooing and stuff like that, like a gray clips or something like that, it, it, it holds up a little better there. Yeah, now the downside of cast steel is if it, you know, if a forward shear falls on the floor, it could bend, and, and a, a well trained sharpener might be able to bend the blade back and fix it for you. If it's a cast shear and it falls on the floor, it's going to. It can. It can break. Mm -hmm. And it'll break before it bends. But, however, if it's a Banica brand shear, that's covered under warranty. Yeah. You know, but if it's another brand shear and you drop on the floor or you know your tip hits something hard, it could break off. So that's the downside of cast steel. But it's not that the cast or the forged one's really better than the other. Um, what we have found, the cast steel is usually the middle ground price shears. The most expensive ones and the cheapest ones are forged because forged takes uh, more hand labor to them. Now this is a picture of a Pakistan factory. Now things may change in the future. We don't have any of our shears made in Pakistan. Sometimes we'll get cases or we'll get razors or what have you made from Pakistan. But the quality of the workmanship in Pakistan is not up to the par that we can use to train our sharpeners for Pakistan made shears. It's important the country of origin. Uh, where the shears are made because that tells you about the quality of the workmanship. Um, you can have the best steel, but if the workmanship is done in such a way that the, um, you see the sparks flying in this picture, if the steel is overheated in the sharpening process, in the manufacturing process, you can take all that temper and the quality of the good steel out of there. So you, you've negated the, the good Japanese steel. So it's important to know the country of origin. Unfortunately, there are shears that are not stamped correctly with their country of origin. Very often in the factories, and we get them all the time, people trying to sell us shears for us to sell to you, and they said that they'll stamp whatever we want on it. They'll put, you know, cobalt steel or made in Japan or whatever. And as if that's not bad enough, there are knockoffs now. So you have to be very careful. We've seen a number of knockoffs ourselves where they'll have a brand name of the shear and it's not made by that company. No. So just, and you've got to be wise consumers. If a salesman comes in, he's got a bunch of different shears, a lot of different brands, and um, the prices seem a little little low, you know, it, they may not be the real, the real brand. Well, how do you check that? How, how um, do you do that? I suggest you, you take your cell phone and you just go over and you, can, you don't even have to call the company. You can just kind of look on there, pull up the website, most of the um, distributor, you know, most distributors are listed on the website of the companies that they sell their shares, and you should be able to find that salesman uh, or, the, or that or that distributor, whoever listed on their website, or just call the company and say, hey, you know, um, uh, Millie Sharpening is here selling some, you know, your shares. Is she a uh, official distributor yeah. of yours? And that way you can know. We know of one company that um, makes some really fine shares. We sell their shares. They're German shares. But sometimes they'll send their seconds or whatever to a, a third world country. Mm -hmm. And they can find their way back here. Yeah. Okay, here's some rainbow colored shear. This is a this is what we call our poison ivy shear. It's a green shear with some Turn around so they can see the bling. And then this is the uh, raven shear, it's a black shear. Uh -huh. now I happen to like the colored shears. Bonnie does not. The reason being, you know, my my <laughs> background is, is marketing pretty. and sales. They're pretty, they're easier to sell. Hers back, her background was before she was in the scissor business, she was a school teacher, she taught science. So she knows that when they put the coating on there, the way they put it on there to stay is they raise the temperature to about four, anywhere between 400 and 450 degrees. They spray it with a, a, a chemical uh, color and it also has titanium in it. The titanium acts as a, a, sort of like an adhesive to keep the color in. And, but the metal softens a little bit when they do that, and that can affect the tempering a little bit. So if this was a 60 before they put the color on, it may be a 59 now. So it affects it a little bit, not a whole lot, and it doesn't really affect the, uh, uh, you know, the, the way the shears can for, perform that much other than the fact that the blade is a little different. It's a little different edge on it simply because you don't want to take the color off. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the reason you buy these shears is because they're pretty not because they're, they're, they're better quality or anything like that. Uh, 
nothing wrong with buying something when it calls it's pretty because you're in the fashion industry. That's why my wife married me. Look at me. I'm so doggone pretty, she just had to marry me. <laughs> Problem <I'm> is, <laughs> prob well, actually, I used to be doggone pretty. This is what happened after 40 years, and you're st she stuck with me now, so you just have to be aware of that. What's pretty today may not be quite so pretty four or five years from now, so be aware of that. But they're excellent shears. If this shear didn't have the color on it and say it would last 15 years by putting in the color on it, it may affect it. Uh, so it only lasts 12 years, but most stylists buy a new shear every three or four years. Anyway, well, they won't so. last 40 years, 42 years. Yeah, like they won't last 42 years like I did, that's right. Um, one other thing I want to say about it, sometimes a salesman, they'll tell you, oh, these are titanium shears. Titanium is what they built the space shuttle out of. And James actually got two titanium knees. Now. That's right, I got titanium <laughs> knees, so I'm the titanium um, man. There's a t this actually this is a PVD plasma coating is what the what it is it's almost like electroplating but I mean it's it's not electroplating but that's the way it's put on it's a tiny 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 amount of titanium in them but if you look at the edge it's silver you can actually see it better on the black you can see it shirt. better on the black one yeah you're cutting with the stainless steel you're not cutting with the titanium mm -hmm. now they are good if you're kind of, if you're one of those people that has a lot of acidity to your hands and you have a lot of uh, nickel allergies mm -hmm. sometimes that coating is good for you but basically you got them you get them because they're pretty mm -hmm. you don't buy them because it salesman tells you they're any better and this one happens to be our i think our number one best seller at this time so poison ivy uh, and the yeah. raven both are doing yeah. real well yeah Okay, we're going to talk about handles now. And handles, to me, is the most important part of the shears. Uh, size matters when you're dealing with shears. You want to be sure and get the right size. And the, the way we do that is we take the shear, push it in there until you feel resistance on the thumb, and lay it on the middle finger. So okay. right like that. And you see where the tip of the shears and the tip of my finger there, that joint? That's the way you want it. Simply because when you're cutting with this shear, the shear you use most often, a lot of times you're talking to your client in the mirror. You're not really looking at the client while you're cutting. Uh, so you're cutting along, and if you have the right size shear, you're less likely to cut yourself. Too short, you cut your knuckle. Too long, you cut yourself down here. Now, when you're in, when in cosmetology school, your teacher told you never cut past the second knuckle. If you didn't cut past the second knuckle, you wouldn't cut your knuckle. You wouldn't cut yourself down here. Well. Ask your teachers, how come they have scars down here and on their knuckles? Because they cut past the second knuckle. When you oh, get measure in, my hand. Measure, your hand is going to be a five and a half instead of a six. Okay, you put it down like that. And you can see right there, that's right. That's at the upper level of her, of her, her size. And that's a five and a half. You want it anywhere with that top digit. You know, right up there in that top digit. And, uh, Hopefully you won't have the arthritic yeah. hands I have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you want to be sure and remember to do it on the middle finger. That's the way you want to do it and measure it that way. And hey, I know, we know that middle finger when Jean drives out in traffic. We see it a lot. A lot of people wave at me and they wave with that middle <laughs> finger. I don't know what, what so, why, I guess I'm a friendly guy and they just love to wave at me, but they wave at the we middle see finger. It, we see it a lot. We but see it now, a lot. after you get the length right, then you want to do the type of handles you want to get. And ergonomic handles, several different types of handles. Some handles are straight, some handles are offset, mm -hmm. and then some handles have a twister to them. They twist and roll and different things like that. So the thumb, the thumb, so the thumb rotates. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're used for different things. Okay, straight handle shear is good. Now this is, it happens to be a curved shear, but a straight handle shear is good for people who cut thumb up like this. Now we know that's not the way you're supposed to cut, but there are a lot of people who do that. If you're cutting like this, a straight handle shear is better for you. If you cut like you're supposed to with your thumb down, an offset shear is better for you. Now I'm going to put both of them in my hand. See this offset shear? If I'm cutting with that and want to cut a straight line, this is my elbow and my shoulder. If I was cutting with this, I'd have to raise my elbow and my shoulder a little bit and I'm going to get tired at the end of the day. Now by the same token, if I'm cutting like this, the straight handle is better than the offset because then I'm having to raise my elbow and shoulder a little higher and I'm really going to be set, uh, hurting at the Here, end of the day. Try this one. Okay, now this one is the uh, twister or swivel. You got your thumb down, got your thumb up. You can cut like this. See how that cuts? You can go up top instead of doing this, which is the same thing as this. You can do this, cut like that. Don't cut it. 
And that, see how my wrist is straight when I'm doing that? That helps prevent carpal tunnel. This will actually reduce stress on your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your lower back, and if you actually be vertically challenged or short, when you do it like this, you can actually gain about two inches in height, so it helps you. You don't have to stand on your tiptoes so much. And show how it fits in a relaxed hand. Okay, take your take relaxed, relaxed hand. hand and just drop it down there, and it fits a relaxed hand. If your hand is more relaxed when you start off, it's going to be more relaxed when you finish. That way, you can go longer. Now, this is a particular shear. We were in a salon, and a lady called us and said, "Will you come sharpen our sh my shears? I'm going to get out of the business." I can't, I just, at the end of the week, I'm just hurting all over. I can't stand it anymore, so I'm going to quit. I'm going to go home, and of course, I'm going to sharpen, uh, cut hair for friends and family. So she wanted her shears sharpened. While we were sharpening her shears in the salon, we loaned her this shear with a rotating thumb. It rocks back and forth. It's called the rocker, and we, she cut with it. We sharpened her shears. I gave them back to her, and I said, oh, by the way, how did you like the shears we loaned you? And she said, they're great. How much are they? And we told her they were, and they were $198, and she bought a pair. Now, remember, she was going to quit that salon. This was 10 years ago. She's still cutting in the same salon using this shear. The fact that she changed this year reduced stress in her wrist, her elbow, her shoulder, her lower back, and she was able to get through the week without so much pain. And so it prolonged her career 10 years, maybe more. Uh, there's been many times we've seen a pair of shears change somebody's life. It's amazing. Now this is also a twister, but it has the two holes in it. I call it your self-defense shear. When you get it, when you get off of your your job at night, you put it on your hand. If anybody gives you any any garbage, you hit them in the jaw, stick them in the neck, open and close it twice, and the fight is over. With. It's gone. <laughs> so, but it's very good. It's very comfortable. You can see how it fits in my hand. You can still do all those things and everything, but it's a very nice shear. Lefty shears, that's something you need to know. Lefty shears are total, are, are they're backwards. They cross backwards from the uh, right, right handed shears. Here, I'll hold them up. Yeah, right hold them there. up. They cross backwards, and if you have a left handed person in your salon uh, and they borrow your right handed shears, they may come back to you not feeling just the same because they have to put side pressure on right handed shears to make them work, and they can't affect the way the shears cut. Now, if you have a shear with teeth, a thinning shear or a chunk, chunking shear, Definitely do not give a left-handed person right-handed chunky shears with any shears because when they twist that handle, the teeth will bite into them and they can ruin the shears for you. So just be aware, if you're left-handed stylus in there, don't loan them your shears. Um, do lefties have a hard time getting used to left-handed shears? Some do. As a matter of fact, they'll come up to, the, uh, up to us at a hair show sometimes and they've been cutting four or five years mm -hmm. and they'll say, you know, I've been cutting four or five years and I just want to get me a pair of nice left-handed shears. And I'll always say, okay, but you have to try them before you, you, you buy them. And I say, because they may fold hair. And they look at me like I'm an idiot. They cut hair, and it, sure enough, it folds. Now, what's unusual about that, they might not be able to use an offset shear, but they could use a straight shear, or they can't use a, or they could use a rotating thumb, a twister shear. They could, they, this might fold hair. They might cut perfectly fine with this one. And that's not the case with right-handed people. Right-handed people can cut with any shear uh, for the main part. So you just need to be extra careful if you're left-handed in, in your selection. You should always try the shear out before you buy it. Now we want to talk about E for edges. And the edges are the thin surfaces where the blades touch. And that's where the actual cutting takes place. And there's two basic types of edges. There's the beveled edge, which is, you know, your your scissors are, are beveled edges, the regular scissors are. But some of your barbering scissors, your, or your German shears, um, are going to be beveled edges, and they have their place. Um, they're going to usually have a little sound, and they're, um, they're going to be less apt to push hair. They work really well for barbering, scissor over comb, dog grooming, that type of thing. Um, they, but they're not as sharp of an edge or smooth of an edge as um, the um, convex edge shears. And some of those bevel edge shears will actually have like little serration, little teeth that will grab the hair. And those work good for maybe cutting children's hair where it's very slippery hair. And uh, they have, they have their, their place. Uh, most hairstylists prefer a convex edge. A convex edge is going to be sharper. It's going to be smoother, it's going to slide to the hair, less effort in the cutting. It's a little bit more difficult to sharpen, um, that, but that's why we teach sharpening and we equip sharpeners. 
And then there's also kind of a hybrid of the two. There's a semi-convex. And that's what all the rainbow-colored ones are, the, the raven he talked about. And you'll see a lot of rainbow-colored ones. They're going to have a little tiny bevel on them, but they're going to cut similar to the convex edge because they're still um, hand-honed inside, and they're going to have a very sharp edge. Um, but those are sharpened a, a little bit differently. Sometimes you'll have a convex edge and someone um, is not knowledgeable about how to sharpen it and they will turn it into a semi-convex. Or they, oh, they have the wrong equipment. They have the wrong yeah. equipment, yes. Well, And um, so if you get your shear sharp and they have a ch, -ch, ch sound, you know that someone's probably sharpened them incorrectly if they were sounding quiet beforehand. Uh, now this is two pictures I found from the internet. And can you see how the convex edge is smoother cut? So it's going to cause less damage to the hair, less split ends to the hair. You don't see the little valleys in there where the hair is going to start to split apart? Yes, yes, yes. That you see in the beveled edge. Now we have one shear here at Benica, and it actually is our first shear. It's our um, flagship shear, which is hard to say fast. It's our Benica International, and it has serration at the tip only. It's a convex edge. And the purpose of it is we found that it's great for um, cutting uh, multicultural hair, over curly hair. Uh, we have a lot of people in the movie industry because Atlanta is, uh, Georgia is number one over California and New York now for shooting mo motion pictures. And a lot of the stylists in this area love the international share because it'll work well on any client that sits in their chair. No. The A in the word shares is for alignment. Gene, can you talk a little bit about the alignment? Alignment is very important. Uh, if, you, if we have a picture up there that you can sit and look at it, if you look at it, the way you test the alignment is you put them, take the shears apart, put them on a parallel bar, and press down at the pivot screw. And then you hold it up to a light source, and you don't want to see any light between the parallel bar and the shear. If you do see light, then there is uh, something wrong with the shear, and we'll show you some different pictures now, there. Now, just to be clear, you, if you hold a pair of shears up to the light and you look at the blades, you should see, you're supposed to see light between the blades. Mm -hmm. That's because the, that's what we're talking yeah. about, the alignment. The blades are actually curved, curved yeah. toward each other so that they come down and they slice. So you will see light between the blades. But on the parallel bar, when you press, you press down, down, you're going to all the light eliminate the light. Yes, yeah. yes. And then uh, at the factory, they, they check them out at the factory and check the alignment. And if there's an alignment problem, they'll correct it at the factory. And uh, they do that by uh, using a special anvil and a special hammer, and they tap the shears and, and work on them. One of the few things you need to worry about, though, is if you notice the picture we have up here, the handles. Uh, some of the handles are broken. Even though these, this particular person, that's all he does all the time, and he has special equipment designed to correct the alignment, about 4 or 5 percent of the shears he, he deals with, he can break. And he knows more about those shears than, than any sharper that comes into your salon would know simply because he works with them every day. And if the guy in the factory is going to break around 4% of the shears, just think how much opportunity you have for your shears to break if you have somebody who does is not, a, is not as familiar with the metal as this guy is. He knows whether it's cast or whether it's forged. He knows what Rockwell hardness is. He knows all those things. The sharper has to guess at some of those things. So uh, it's much higher. So if a sharper says your shears out of alignment, I may be able to put them back in alignment, but they may break. Just be aware that you you could look up to 20% chance of them breaking your shear. So mm -hmm. just be aware of that. Uh, there are some other ways to do it without hammering them by doing the sharpening, but it's really uh, very few sharpeners are skilled enough to do that. Uh, you need to be very skilled and have the proper equipment to do that. But you can adjust alignment without bending or, or hammering the shear. Yeah, and I know how to fix the alignment, um, but that's something I very, very much hesitate doing because uh, I don't care how experienced you are, how many years you practice you have, you always have the chance of breaking the shears. And um, so if the sharpener says, I need to fix the set, sometimes I'll use that word of alignment, you need to be very, very cautious very and know that they, they have a good chance of breaking them. And, I mean, you can, you can tell them, hey, will you guarantee will you replace the shears if you break it and if they say no then you may not want to take the chance so it's, it's it just depends on you a lot of times shears that are out of alignment will cut fine it's just that they don't they, they'll be need to be sharpened a little more off than usual and they'll, they'll have feel they'll, snippy. they'll, they'll feel snippy, snippy. They'll, won't you know. feel just quite as good but they're still functional yeah. so you know yeah. if he breaks them they're not functional then so you just need to be aware of that
Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times you hear about, you'll hear horror stories about the sharpeners come up in the van and he took the shears out of the van to sharpen and then he stole their shears, drove off. He probably didn't steal the shears. He probably broke one, and he was too embarrassed to come well, back in and tell. He did steal the shears. <laughs> yeah, I guess, off, so, so. I guess so. I guess so. I guess but uh, so. <laughs> the reason we stole it because he was embarrassed that he broke it. So. So just just be real cautious, and be cautious when someone. Uh, we'll talk about that about sharpening, but when someone comes up in the van, some excellent sharpeners work out of the vans. But that's also, you know, you want to keep an eye on your shears. Now the R in the word shears is something that, speaking of sharpeners, most of the sharpeners I've come across that haven't been trained, haven't been going to the sharpening conventions, have no idea about this, and that's the ride line. The ride line is the really smooth, shiny place on the inside of the shear. That's where the two edges ride over each other. That's where it's, the term comes from. It's sometimes called the home line. That has to be put down with water stones done by hand, hand honing. And when you buy a shear, when you're looking at a shear, you should take a look at that shear and make sure that ride line is even. And it should be shiny. There might be a few little grind marks in it, um, but it, it, the shinier it is, the more even it is, the better that ride line is. If you find it is really wide and narrow, wide and narrow, like some of these pictures I'm showing you here, that's a sign a shear is out of alignment. One thing to have your shear go out of alignment because of over sharpening or dropping or whatever. But you don't want to buy a brand new shear that's out of alignment. So just, this is another thing you want to look at when you're purchasing that main shear of the business. And that's another thing. When you buy a shear with a low rockwell hardness, they're much more likely to be out of alignment. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Because the, the metal won't hold together. Yeah. S, the last S in the word shear stands for source. Yeah, source is very important. The main thing is if somebody comes into your salon and they want to sharpen your shears and they want to sell you some shears, you have to be able to get in touch with them. You have to know where they're from. They they give you a business card that doesn't have their name, address, and telephone number on it, if it just has their name or just their name and a P.O. box, you probably don't want to have them doing your shears. There's a reason why they don't give you much information. It's because if they screw your shears up or they don't do a good job, you have no way of contacting them to ask for your money back. Uh, you just want to be sure that somebody's reputable. You, usually most sharpers now have a website you can go to which has all their information about it. Uh, Lord, we have a website, we have email, we have uh, uh, Facebook, we have uh, blogs, Instagram. And Instagram. Whatever uh, the new things coming down whatever the pipe new will things be on it, will I'm be sure. On it. So uh, you can YouTube. get a hold of us, YouTube, you can see a lot of YouTube videos by us. So, you know, you want to be able to contact the guy. It does absolutely no good for me to tell you I guarantee my work for two weeks after I sharpen them if you can't get in touch yeah. with me. You have to be able to call me back to have come back to fix them. Or if I sell you a shear and says it's got a lifetime warning, it's manufacturer's defects, and you can't find me. If you can't find me, the warranty's worth nothing. So you want to be careful about that. And where this comes into play a lot of times is the, the sharper that comes by your salon, you want to know these things. Plus also at hair shows. You need to ask some certain questions at hair shows. Is the person selling the shear an authorized dealer, like we talked about before? Can you contact them after the sale? What does the warranty cover? Most companies will tell you they have a lifetime warranty against manufacturer's defects. However, what they don't tell you is all it covers is the screw and the bumper. Sometimes they don't even cover that. No, because they consider that uh, uh, normal wear and tear. Wear and tear, just like yeah. brakes on your car. So uh, a lot of times all it covers is the screw. And uh, with us, we're a little different. We cover the screw, the bumper. If you have finger rest and it falls out, we replace that for you. Uh, if you drop the shear, and it breaks, so the tip breaks off. That's covered under our warranty. Also, most companies won't let you send them to somebody else to sharpen. If you have a local sharper come by and sharpen your shears, they say that voids your warranty. They want you to send them back to them. And most of the companies that do that are charging $35 to $50 for sharpening, where most of the time when you get somebody to come in from off the street to sharpen, uh, who's driving by, it's about 25 bucks is about the average price yeah, for sharpening. Yeah, yeah. And well, so, it's going to 30 Yeah, it's going it's to 30 But uh, Tell yeah. about the ones that so-called free sharpening. Oh, yeah, send them back for free sharpening. Some companies, if you look at their little warranty thing that they say, it's free lifetime sharpening, but it's a $25 shipping and handling charge yeah. for sending it in. Yeah. And then they have a disclaimer saying, if there are any nicks in the blade, it's an extra $10. Well, most shears that need to be sharpened have nicks in the blade. Yeah, so I mean, so it's, 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 <laughs> your free sharpening now is thirty-five dollars, and that's for shipping and handling. Uh, you know, 
Read the, read the fine print. Read, read the, the fine print, print on those because you just have to be aware. Of and that. even if it, even if they had um, free sharpening, you could send them back. I mean, you're going to be without your shears for for a week or two. Yeah, and, and I've heard sometimes six weeks and longer. Yeah, you know? so, so you, now you have to buy a second pair of shears. Yeah, yeah, you just need to be aware of that. You got your shears up on your station. The the towel girl or guy comes up, puts the dirty towels on top of your shears, picks your dirty towels out of your your ba basket there, puts them on top, grabs the shoe, the towels and takes them back to the back to wash them. Sometimes when they do that, they'll grab that top towel which your shears are on, put your shears in the washing machine and wash your shears. And now what? That's not too bad because you got centrifugal force working, so they're on the side. But then they're they're very efficient. They'll take those shears and put them in the dryer. Now we got gravity, kerplunk, kerplunk, just like you hear shoes in the dryer, they're real loud. And if those go through the dryer, they are going to be messed up. There's not much we can do for them. So that but that's an accident. Or your clients can grab them and cut plastic tags off clothing or off their shoes or something. Those are all accidents. That's covered for us for a year on all our shears. Um, another thing about our warranty, uh, you don't have to have your warranty, your receipt. No, you and you don't even have to have your warranty card. You don't have to call us up and say, hey, I bought some shears, I want to register them. Uh, if you bought shears from us, they're in our computer, and it doesn't matter whether it's in our computer or not, it's got our name on it, we're going to cover it. It says uh, Benica, that's says us. says Benica, us. Plus, you can have the local guy sharpen your shears that won't affect your warranty. Uh, even if they sharpen them wrong, if it's a convex edge shear and they put a bubbled edge on it, we know we didn't do that. But you need a new screw, guess what? You get a new screw. But we don't warrant somebody else's bad sharpening. No, 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 if they no, sharpen no, bad, we, you yeah, can't send them back to us and say, We don't cover stupid. Somebody sharpened is <laughs> wrong, you need, I need to be Or if you try to um, apply a paint can over paint, with them, yeah, I mean, you don't cover stupid. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a screwdriver, that's not covered either. And your warranty's no good. Well, you need to also ask when you're buying shears, and <laughs> what about satisfaction guarantee? What if I get them and they hurt my hand, I don't like them? I mean, um, what's your recourse there? Well, we have we have 30 day money back, money back guarantee, or we swap them for something else. Yeah, most the sharpeners, some of them have two, two yeah. weeks, but it's still a reasonable amount of time. Reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And uh, most of the time, uh, what we get it is, is back is they bought a five and a half and they decided they want a six inch shear. And it's nothing to do with the shear. Well, we get a lot of the twisters back. They a lot of the twisters get really back. Or if they buy left handed shears yeah. and they can't get used to them, they want a right handed shear. Uh, sometimes you'll see on our, our, our website, you'll see mystery shears. Yeah. Those are our mystery shears. If they come back to us, we can't sell them as new. So we put them on there as mystery shears and uh, you get a good price on them. We talked about what every letter in shear stands for steel, handles, edges, alignment, rind line, and your source. That's how you do when you're looking to buy a pair of shears. Now you want to take care of your shears once you get them. And that's when we talk about getting them the spot treatment. Your shears to spa treatment. This is every day, and then once or twice a year a vacation. That's like sharpening. So the spa treatment, the S stands for storing your shears. You want to store them in something that protects them. And there's a lot of state board rules, so you got to follow the state board rules. Unfortunately, what's best for the shears isn't always the most. Um, well, the state board. The state, state board is board more concerned about cleanliness than they are the longevity of your shears. Our shears come in a case. You may have a box or something. You want something that protects your shears and, and from uh, dropping, and but you want something that can breathe, that the oxygen can get to them. Remember we talked about the shears are stainless steel. That chromium in it has to react to oxygen in the air for the chromium to do its work to keep your shears from rusting. So you have to put them in something that breathes. Sometimes when you get new shears, they'll come in little plastic baggie. You don't want to store them in that. Just maybe to, to take them back and forth in the car, um, in your purse, 
but to leave them in there if they're damp or anything they're going to rust so you want to make sure that you keep your shears in something that breathes. I remember one time Jean put um, a pair of shears, good shears too. Yeah, good pair of shears. And, <laughs> and the cup holder of the car, and he spilled the coke all over them. And within, in the heat of the car here in the south, within a day they had rusted. And they were expensive shears. Yeah, they were nice shears. So you want to protect your, you want to store your shears in something that will keep them, um, so they can breathe, and but will keep them from falling on things or. Like the Jean talked about the towel girl picking them up, putting them in the washing machine, or falling on the floor. So you want to put them in something that keeps them safe. Then you also, the P in the word spa is protecting them from rust. Protecting them from rust covers a lot of things. Number one is cleaning them. I suggest those microfiber cloths. Those work really well. Rubbing alcohol. There's a product called H42. Um, what you don't want to use is there's these uh, spray disinfectants that you see. There's a number of different brands of them. If you read on there, it's some of them have like a Teflon in them. Some of them have like a, uh, a, a, a water products in there. They're wet. And they will, I've seen it, they'll get underneath the screw and they will rust the shears. They'll also leave like a goldish film in there that will make them feel sticky. They'll do the same thing to your clipper blades. So be real cautious about using any of those, those aerosol type um, disinfectant sprays on your shears. But rubbing alcohol seems to be the best thing we've seen for cleaning them off. And make sure that when you wipe off your shears, hand me the microfiber cloth here. I've got a shoe here. You want to wipe them off with this. Let me get here there. You want to wipe them off spine down and wipe them off this way. If you wipe them off that way, not only can you cut yourself, but it's not good for the shears. And the reason I say a microfiber cloth or anything you wouldn't mind wiping your good expensive sunglasses with, because if you use your terry cloth towel, that is really rough on the edge. That edge on a well sharpened um, good shear is only going to be maybe about a, a couple of microns thick. Um, that's very easy to scratch that and dull that out. It's sort of like if you have an expensive automobile, you're not going to wipe it off with a rough, dirty paper towel or something. You're going to wipe it off with a chamois or a microfiber cloth or something soft. So it's important that you clean your shears. Also, in protecting them from rust, you want to oil your shears. The oil that we recommend is this little tube oil has like a brush on it. We call it sumo oil. It's a camilla oil, which comes from a tree in Japan that they used on the old samurai swords. They use it in cuticle oil. They'll use it in hair products, this Cosmet type of thing, makeup. cosmetics, makeup. In fact, when you oil your shears with this, go ahead and do your cuticles. It's great, great on your cuticles. But you see the little brush? That brush will get up underneath that screw and clean any hair out. And then you just sort of paint. Can you see that? You just sort of paint the oil on there on the back, both sides, and then there'll be one blade that moves on this, this shear, it's this one, so I'm going to put a little oil right there. And that's how you oil them. So that protects them from rust and helps them go longer. Oil them at least once a week, but my recommendation is to do the spa treatment every day and oil them at the end of the day. The A in the word spa is adjusting your shears correctly. Now, if you don't remember anything else we covered today, the whole thing, you don't remember mom and pop here, <laughs> Banika, I want you to remember how to correctly adjust the screw on your shears. A lot of stylists have loose screws, don't they, Jane? Yeah, I've made several of them. <laughs> um, in fact, if you go to your salon, I'd be willing to bet you any amount of money. 50% of your, your shears, the screw will be loose on. Now, let me show you the adjustment. This one is adjusted correctly. You see how it moves, but it doesn't fall all the way down? If it flopped all the way down, like this, it would fold hair. In fact, give me one of these little tissues here. Don't, you know, they tell you not to cut hair, I mean, not to cut paper with your shears. Now, for testing your shears to see if they're dull or if they're sharp, the, uh, this is the single ply puff tissue. And I'm going to cut, I'll make a liar out of me. <laughs> okay, I've got it too loose, and when I cut the tissue, oh, these just are too nice. There we go. I made it cut. I made it cut bad. Okay, you see how it cuts, but it it cuts, but it folds. 
Now, if I tighten that screw to the right adjustment, and that's about when you think you got it about right, take it all the way open. Don't do it part way, it'll, it'll nick. Take it all the way open and wiggle it. Up, oh, you see how it loosened up? I'm gonna go, see it's click. And I used to tell people, righty tighty lefty loosey but then people would be turning it facing this way and then they're going Ooh. so i want you to think of it as a clock and you go in the direction the hands on the clock turns to make it tighter and go the opposite direction to make it looser and just do it usually they'll click you'll hear it click and you want to do it like one click at a time to check it but i see now i've adjusted it correctly and See, even with the light pressure, it cuts fine. So it's important to keep your shears adjusted correctly. A lot of times you think your shears are dull when really the problem is, a lot of times you think your shears are dull, but really the problem is you, you loose screw. A loose screw, yeah. yeah. A lot of stylists run around with loose screws and you, you just don't want to be one of them. And this is a chart where we've shown scientifically which adjustments takes the least amount of pressure of your hand in closing the shear. And if they're adjusted correctly, you don't have to work your hand as hard. It's not only that it gives you a better cut and your shears will last longer and your edges will last longer, but you don't have to work your hand as hard if they're adjusted correctly. So at the end of the day, you're storing them to something nice. P, you're protecting them, which means that you're oil and clean them. And then A, check that adjustment every day. Now, if you're having to adjust them every day or between every haircut and they're loosening up, there's something defective. You've got a um, loose screw, loose screw or, 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 or a washer that's yeah. missing or something. There's, some, there's something defective, and usually if the sharpener can't fix it, that's covered under warranty in just about every shear brand you, out there. So you should not have to be adjusting your shears all the time. But I would check them at the end of the day and just make that part of your habit after, you, after you've oiled them. Yeah, after you've given them a spa treatment, you know, and you've taken care of your employees and making sure they're nice and comfortable, once or twice a year, you want to send them on vacation. And for, if that's your shears, you want to get them sharpened by a reputable sharpener. And uh, have them sharpened regularly. You know, people ask us, how often should I have my shears sharpened? The proper answer to that question is whenever they don't perform the way you want them to. It could mean once a year, it could mean once every two years. Or it could mean once every six months, or every six weeks, I mean. If, or it could be in one week if you drop mean, them. Yeah, if you drop them and put a big nick in them, they're not yeah, functioning yeah. right, so they need to be sharpened again. Uh, most people sharpen them once or twice a year, some people three times. Mm -hmm. just depends on what kind of cutting you're doing and, and how particular you are. But you just want to make sure they're done properly and by a good sharpener. Also, when the sharpener brings them back to you, before you pay them, try them out. Make yeah, sure they cut yeah. right. Then you pay them. That way, if if they're not cutting right, you can get him to fix them right, right while he's there rather than have to try to call him back and get him back in here two or three days later. So uh, always check, check your uh, That's why it's nice to have somebody that comes by to your salon and to sharpen. Yeah, if you mail them off and they're not right when you get back, guess what? you got to put them back in the mail, send them off. You pay shipping one way, they pay shipping back. They don't charge you to resharp them usually, but still. Now you were without them a week or two weeks. Now you're without them you know, two weeks or four weeks. So, you know, it just... Depends on how particular you are. So get them sharpened on a regular basis and, and get find a confidential sharpener. If you can't find one, you can always send them to us uh, through the mail. Uh, we actually recommend that if you have a local sharpener, use them. Simply because we can do a great job sharpening your shears. Uh, but I'm not real confident about the way UPS and FedEx and the postal people handle packages. And, you know, they turn the truck, packages fall over on top of them. You got a 75 pound package falling over on your, your $300 shears, it's not going to be good for them. So tell them how to find a local sharpener. Go to our website, put in your, go to the sharpening section, put in your zip code, and that'll tell you if there's somebody we've trained in your area or that we know about. Now, and you can also go to findasharpener.com. They can go to findasharpener.com or mbtsg.com. Yes, yes. And uh, there'll be people listed there. Uh, you know, it's best always try to get somebody who's used them before. You can always ask for uh, recommendations uh, or, or uh, uh, referrals from some people, you know. Uh, and what's nice, if you find a sharpener you're happy with, tell your friends. Yeah. Let your friends know. Sharpeners are like a good car mechanic. If you find one, you want to keep him and you want to let other people know about him so they don't get their shears jacked up by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. 
Now, one thing I want to mention about this too website, findasharpener.com is a website that's owned by us or uh, mm -hmm. looked up by us. And so um, the sharpeners are on there are people I know at least they have been trained correctly and have the right equipment, um, whether they're in a bad mood that day or not. I don't guarantee their work, but I know they, they do know how to sharpen a convex edge correctly. They know what a ride line is. They know what alignment is. They know all that. Um, NBTSG.com. That stands for the National Beauty Tools Sharpeners Guild. Anyone can join that for $50 a year. However, the National Beauty Tools Sharpeners Guild certifies sharpeners. So if you look up a sharpener there, you want to look and make sure it says they are certified. If they are a certified sharpener, whether it's in blades or shears, they have um, gone through some very rigorous testing. Um, now, there's some excellent, excellent sharpeners that are not certified, don't get me wrong. But if they're certified, you can rest assured they know what they're doing. Now, if you're in the Atlanta area, or you can send them to us, you know, Benika Shears does sharpening. Yeah. But you got to be very careful about who sharpens your shears. This is some pictures of some shears that were sharpened incorrectly. And you see how they changed the convex edge into a beveled edge? Not only do they do that, but because of the heat that was involved, they actually burnt the tip. They took the temper out. So I would be able to go back and fix those shears, reconvex it, make them sharp again. However, I can't put the temper back in. So one bad sharpening. It's not like a haircut where the hair is going to grow back. One bad sharpening, you can lose your whole investment. So just be very careful. There's a lot of outdated um, equipment out there. I've heard of people going out on the sidewalk scraping the shears. <laughs> There's horror stories yeah. about people um, that sharpen. And just because Mary's happy with the sharpening um, doesn't mean that you're going to be happy with the sharpener's work. Now, you are more likely will yeah. not having a reference, but... Uh, Mary may be doing more barbering and straight cutting. Maybe you're slide cutting. Maybe that type of sharpening is not going to work for you. Modern sharpeners are going to use a flat hone type system, not a grinding type system, and they're only going to take off a teeny tiny amount of metal. Whatever is the smallest amount to get the edge back and to take the nicks out. Some of the sharpeners out there take a huge amount of metal and then you, you, it, it, it just shortens the life of your shears. Um, I've had um, I have clients that I've sharpened the same shear for over 20 years. And as long as you're getting them sharpened, you take care of your shears, follow that spa treatment, and you get them sharpened by someone who knows what they're doing. It only takes a small amount of metal off. Your shears can last through your career. So just take care of your tools. And just to let you know, uh, Bonnie, we talked about MBTSG. And uh, Bonnie took that test. She was the number one sharpener in the country. Uh, I, she, wore, I wore my little yeah, medallion. Yeah, she wore her medallion. I had to brag on myself yeah. today. <laughs> so uh, you want a good quality sharpener and somebody who knows what they're doing. We hope we can work with you in the future, see you at a hair show. Or if you're a cosmetology teacher and you want us to come by and do a lecture, if we're in the area, we'll be glad to come by and do lectures for your students. Y'all take care and have a great day.